Thanks, Abe, and hello, everyone, and welcome to the UFC 137 media conference call. UFC 137 takes place on October 29th from the Mandalay Bay Event Center in Las Vegas, live on pay-per-view at 9 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Pacific. As you all heard yesterday, we have a new main event. It will be BJ Penn versus Nick Diaz with the co-main event, a heavyweight collision between Matt Mitrione and Czech Congo. At this time, we are joined by BJ Penn, Matt Mitrione, and Czech Congo. Abe, if you would, let's open it up for questions. All right, certainly. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to queue up to ask a question at this time, please press star, then one, on your touchtone telephone keypad. Again, that's star one if you'd like to queue up to ask a question, and we will pause for a moment to assemble our roster. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, that's star one if you'd like to queue up to ask a question. All right, great. We'll go to our first question from Darnell Mason with MMA Hawaii. Hey, uh, aloha, BJ. What's up, man? Hey, I was wondering if you could uh, talk about the uh, UFC gym BJ Penn that's opening in uh, Waikiki. I know you guys have already started selling memberships there, and it looks like it's going to be a great facility. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm very excited uh, that I'm working with the UFC uh, to do something like this. Uh, uh, everybody in the Oahu has been asking me for a long time when to put a gym uh, to an open Oahu, but I, I really wanted to do it right. I mean, I'm doing it right, and the UFC team owners uh, came to me when uh, uh, talked to me about the deal. I, I was like, you know what, that's the next year of heaven. Let's put this together. And uh, that's the thing. It's going to be amazing. I'm, I'm very excited. I, I haven't uh, had a that much time to uh, do it right now because of the fight coming up, but uh, I'm very excited about it. Oh, uh, one more question, BJ. Uh, where'd you uh, do your uh, training for this camp? Did you uh, stay in Hilo, or did you go down to the Ruka gym? I, I spent, uh, I, I spent uh, uh, a month in California at the Ruka gym, and then I went back to Hilo for three weeks, and now I'm back to here at the Ruka gym, and then I'm going to head over to the Ruka here in, in Italy, and I'm going to have to Vegas on uh, Sunday. Okay, thank you very much, BJ. See you next week in Vegas. Thank you, Bye-bye. All right, great. Thank you very much. And now we'll move on to the next question. We will go to Dave Diver with Post Media News. Hi. Uh, thanks for the call, you guys. Uh, BJ, there's been, uh, um, you know, a lot of, uh, I don't know if distraction is the right word, but, uh, you know, just a lot of issues around the, uh, the 137 card. Uh, you've been around the game for a long time. Is, is it at the point where things, you know, like everything that has been going on, are, are they distractions for you, or are they just, you know, an everyday part of the business? You know, this, this is an everyday part of the business. Uh, you know, everything, uh, there's been so many changes and, and so many different, uh, it's been a roller coaster ride, you know, up and down and, and uh, at the end of the season, this is a job, you know, I just can, uh, you know, go to work, uh, as a home and, and see my daughter, and, uh, it's not it, it, there's no stress, there's not just going all right, uh, you know what, I'll jump out for now and then jump back in. Thanks, you guys. All right, great, thank you very much. Now we'll move on to Neil Davidson with Canadian Press. Yes, Dave, did you say that, is Nick Diaz on the call? Neil, he is not on the call at the moment, and we are continuing to reach out to him to get on this call. Did you expect him to be on the call? Yes, we did. Is he still on the card then? Just kidding. <laughs> That's a better question for Mr. Dana White, but uh, we are working on getting a hold of him as we speak, Neil. Thank you. All right, great, thank you. Now move on to Damon Martin with MMAWeekly.com. Hi, uh, question for BJ. Uh, we know this fight is now the main event. It's a three-round fight, but there was a lot of talk yesterday about, you know, wanting to make it a five-round fight and, you know, trying to make it a five-round fight. What interest at all did you have in that? Yeah, you know, um, I'm... I'm, I'm happy to do a, a five-round fight. I've been five rounds uh, many, many times in my career, many times in the UFC, you know, and, and, and like I said earlier, though, this, this is a job, and, and I want to be compensated accordingly, and, uh, and that's it. I, I'm more than willing to do a five-round fight. If Dana wants a five-round fight, you know, he can just give me a call, and we can put it together right now. Or if Caesar wants to make it a five-round fight, he can compensate me personally. He can put his money where his pocket. You know, uh, it's not easy. 
Yeah. Does it, does it, I mean, does it, you know, with the short notice and everything, I mean, does any of that bother you or is it just mostly about, you know, like you said, like the compensation part of it? No, none of it bothers me at all. You know, I've, I've been, uh, I've been training for a fight. I'm ready to fight. You know, we're fighters. Uh, I'm sure a bunch of us, uh, we can just uh, jump into, uh, jump into the, uh, a, a ring or cage uh, anywhere around the world and, and go five rounds, you know? So that's what we do. Uh, we've, I've been training for the last uh, 15 years. Excellent. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, thank you. Moving on, we will go to Elliot Moshansky with UltimateFighter.com. Yes, hi. Uh, I guess the, the first question is for uh, for, uh, for, for Matt Mitrione, and, and Matt just wants to, you know, obviously this is going to be a, a, a step up of uh, uh, fight for you in, in, in general, but now that it's a, a co-main event fight, uh, do you think the race is important at all in uh, in your career and uh, possibly your uh, elevation to the next level in the heavyweight division? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I couldn't really make that out. It's a lot of background noise there. Can you say that again for me? Uh, I was, yeah. Obviously, this is going to be a, a big fight for you anyway in, in terms of your progress in the, in the heavyweight division, but I think that having it as a co-main event uh, brings it to the uh, make things even more important for you, or, or is it just the same as it was a couple of days ago? No, it's, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, yeah, it's definitely, it, it's, uh, it's a big, you know, the biggest name with this in part of my career, but... To be honest with you, I mean, the fact that I don't care if it's because you're on the main event. I mean, I've, I've competed on, on the biggest stage there is in, in professional football. I've competed against, I mean, I've played in front of 110,000 people at Michigan. You know, like, there's, the, the, the relevance of where it's at is irrelevant. The relevance is, is I got to try not to get my ass kicked by Chicago. That's what's important, not where the fight is. I mean, that's, the, the, so I guess, no, that, that makes no difference at all. The most important thing is that I don't get beat up too badly in public. That's the worst part. Uh, the way the way you phrase it, uh, not not get your ass kicked by by Czech Congo. Obviously, his his last fight was against your uh, good friend Pat Barry, and uh, was a, a very you know surprising finish. What do you take from from that fight as as you prepare to uh, to fight Czech yourself? Uh, is, is there something you've learned, or does it or does seeing your friend that happen to your friend add motivation? What effect, if any, has uh, has Czech's last fight had on you and your preparation and your outlook on this fight? Well, uh, to answer that, as far as like, as far as like, did that give me extra motivation? No, no. Pat Barry's a professional. He fights for money, same way Czech does, same way I do. So the fact that Czech, you know, knocked him out uh, on a beautiful comeback, I mean, that's, no, that doesn't that motivate me anything. It just, all, all it did is shows me that Czech's resilient. He's, you know, he's, He's not going to let the fight get stopped. He's going to do everything he can to keep scrapping. Uh, you know, and that means he's got a ton of heart. So that's what that shows me if, and over anything else. <clears throat> and what I've learned from him is I know that, you know, if you get him in trouble, he's, he, 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 he's too active and the ref won't stop a fight because he's so active. So he does everything he can to make sure that, you know, he's gonna, he has a fighting chance to win at all times. Um, the way I think all of us do if we call ourselves a competitor and, you know, I think you have the heart of a, of a warrior of a champion. So I guess that's my answer. All right, those are my questions for now. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, moving on. We'll go to Stephen Morocco with MMAJunkie.com. Hey, BJ. Um, a quick follow-up on what Damon was asking about. You said that it was about uh, compensation and that you were open to a five-round fight. Where did you leave things? Is this a three-round fight still, or are you still waiting to hear about it, uh, what, 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 what it's going to be? Actually, I, I, I have not gotten a call from the UFC or Dana or anyone uh, since, since uh, I mean, I heard all this news. I, I found out uh, from BJPenn.com, just like everyone else did, uh, that I'm the main event. So, um, you know, I, you know I, I, I haven't talked to anyone. I'm just, I'm just uh, sitting here. I, I know the same, the same amount of information that you know. So from your understanding, at this moment, it's a three-round fight. I, I, I mean, from, from, from all of our understanding, from, I, I only know what you know also, that, that uh, me and Nick Diaz were scheduled for the three-round co-main event, and uh, I haven't gotten a call or talked to anyone since then. Okay. What do you make of Nick not showing uh, for the uh, conference call today? You know, uh, you know, Nick is Nick. You know, he, he, he's going to do, do what he does, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's, for me, it's just, uh, 
you know, that's what he does. I actually, it, it, it's kind of, it kind of, you know, I, I, I enjoy uh, watching the, the stuff that Nick Diaz does. It, you know, he, he doesn't change. He, he's just always himself, and uh, you know that uh, that that has nothing to do with me. He does, he does always show up to the fight and, and fight. So, you know, I, I don't think we have to worry about that stuff. Okay, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Great, thank you very much. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, that is star one if you'd like to queue up to ask a question. Again, that is star one to queue up to ask a question at this time. We'll go to Anthony Spring with FightNews.com. Hi, this first question um, is for BJ. just wanted to know your, your reaction when you found out that you were going to be the main event. Yeah, I, I was excited to be, to be the main event. You know, it's always a good thing. Uh, I remember the first time I main evented a card, uh, maybe about 10 years ago uh, with James Pulver. Uh, years ago, and I remember just being so excited that uh, I was on the main event. I remember my uh, jiu-jitsu coach, Renato Verissimo, was like, wow, wow, are you the main event? And I was like, yeah, can you believe that? They actually put me in the main event. So, uh, you know, I, I just uh, try to my blessings and, uh, you know, as much fights that I could ever uh, main event uh, in my life, you know, I'll be there trying my best. And, and you've been in a lot of cards um, before. Does it, does it feel a little more special this time around since it was kind of an unexpected and, and last-minute decision, decision to move you to headliner status? Uh, what was that, sir? Does it make it a little more special, um, you know, to, to know that you're going from the co-main event to the main event this time? Well, it, it definitely makes it special, you know. I'm, um, there's been a lot of changes uh, uh, throughout this whole thing. I was supposed to fight Condit, and then, and then I was left without an opponent, and then Dana put me and Nick together. And, and now next thing I know, I'm in the main event. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's been a wild ride, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to be in the main event. You know, I mean, what more can I ask for? I'm in the main event of Las Vegas. It's, it's, it's been a while since, since I've been there. Cool. Thank you. That's my final question. All right, thank you very much. And moving on, we'll go to Garrett Dare with BleacherReport.com. Hey, BJ, it's a real honor. Um, what advantages do you feel you have heading into your fight on the 29th? And what advantages do you feel Nick has over you, if any at all? Um, you know, um, as, as far as advantages or, or, or plans or, or what I'm planning to do, you know, um, you know, I, I, I've, I've, never, I've never really changed much uh, throughout my, my whole career, you know, I just try to come in and, and fight my best and try to take the other guy out. As far as Nick, Nick goes, uh, you know, I, I really feel, you know, I, I really feel that uh, with uh, Nick's, uh, Nick, Nick spars with guys like Andre Ward, uh, he was signed to fight Jeff Lacey, you know, he was being considered to fight Roy Jones Jr., you know, I, I really feel that uh, Nick, Nick is the best boxer in mixed martial arts today, and, uh, and, and it shows, you know, in a bunch of his fights, I mean, he's got the highest punch volume, and and he's, he's uh, done all these great things, uh, standing up, and he can stand up with anyone. So, you know, um, a, a lot of people want to talk to me about my boxing and, and different things, but, uh, you know, without a doubt, I think Nick has proved that, that he's the best boxer in MMA. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's got, we were kind of similar, I guess. You know, he's got, he's got a striking and, and jiu-jitsu, and, and that's kind of my two strengths also. You know, I, I try to work on my takedowns here and there, and I'm, I'm sure Nick does, but, you know, and then Nick's got a great cardiovascular endurance, you know, so... It's just, I think it's just going to be a fun fight, and it's going to be a great fight for the fans. Okay. My, my next question is, uh, you're obviously coming, over, coming off a big win over Hughes and a tough draw with Fitch at 127. Do you feel a win over Diaz will put you in line for a uh, title shot against the winner of St. Pierre and Condit? Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to speak too soon. I, I'd, love to, I'd love to get a, a, another title be, before I step out of the game, you know, but uh, as far as everything goes, I'm just trying to take it one fight at a time. And, you know, if, if, if Dana feels that, uh, that I'm impressive, you know, in, in my next fight and he wants to grab me that opportunity, you know, I'd, 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 I'd be very gracious with the offer. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you. And moving on, we'll go to Ben Fouts with MMAfighting.com. My question is for BJ. BJ, you mentioned that you know Nick does what he does, and it doesn't really affect you. I mean, do you, as the guy who you know in the main event who did show up for the conference call, I mean, do you feel at all like that you know it puts too much on your shoulders, you having to do too much of the PR responsibilities if the other guy doesn't show up for it? No, no, you know, um, it's nothing. That's nothing for me. You know, I, I was just kind of I was just going to take a thirty-minute jog anyway today. I got nothing to do. You know. But, uh, 
you know, that, that, that's what, you know, I, I'm a fan of Nick Diaz. I've been a fan of Nick Diaz before he was in the UFC, and I liked, I enjoyed watching his antics then, and I've known, I know Nick Diaz personally, I know Nate Diaz, you know, and, and uh, you know, whatever they do, they're themselves, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's no problem. None of this, uh, the only thing that's going to be bothering me is when Nick Diaz is probably punching me in the middle of the octagon. That's the only time he's going to be bothering me. And just so I can make sure I understand, you said that you haven't really talked to the UFC. You know only kind of what we know. I mean, does that mean that you didn't have any conversation with the UFC after they decided to, to move you up to the main event? You had no contact with them? None. No, I haven't, I haven't talked to Dana or, or anybody. So you found out that you were in the main event now via the Internet, just like we did all on BJPenn.com, I'm sure? Yep, I found out from BJPenn.com just like everyone else. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. And moving on, we'll go to Neil Davidson with Canadian Press. Yes, thank you. BJ, you said you'd like to get another title before you uh, step out of the sport. But given how much you've uh, done in the sport, the length of your career, um, do you ever think, do you, as you get in, as you prepare for a fight now, do you, do you think that... Uh, uh, this may be one of the last ones. Are you, do you start to look back? Or are you still looking forward? You know what? I, I, I've, had to, I've had to answer this question a lot over the years. You know, it's, it's for me. It, it's definitely. It's always been a love hate relationship uh, with mixed martial arts uh, and maybe even the UFC at times. But uh, you know, no, I, I'm not planning on, on on going anywhere soon. You know, but you, you never know when you get that opportunity uh, to get a title shot or, or to maybe get a title. Uh, just like Carlos comment, you know, he's gonna sit out and wait because uh, he never knows again when he could get that opportunity. And I understand him, uh, you know, for doing something like that. And you know, it's you, you never know. I'd love to stick around as long as Randy stuck around. You know, if if uh, if I could do something like that. But uh, you know, it's it's one day I want to fight. 100 more fights in the next day, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I think a lot of fighters feel that way, but maybe I'm just more vocal about it. Okay. Good luck next week. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Now we'll move on to Nicholas King with CKNW, 980 AM. Hey, guys. Uh, appreciate it. BJ, how you doing, buddy? How's it going, man? Good. Aloha to you. Big fan from Vancouver. Um, just wondering if uh, having your brother uh, start fighting, if that's, if that's kind of lit a fire underneath you to kind of get you training a little bit harder, has it motivated you at all? Um, I, I think, I think it, it's nice to see him fighting. You know, I'm, uh, oh, I'm motivated and stuff, but, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure it has motivated me a little bit, you know, but, uh, you know, I, just, I want to see him uh, do the best in his career. So as of now, I mean, we got, we got fights going on at the same time. But, but, but you know what, it, he's, he's always been around the camps, and, and he's always been there as a training partner and different things, so it, it's kind of just business as usual. Um, another quick question here for you. Um, if, you were, uh, if you were Condit, if you were in his shoes, would you, would you sit and wait for George St. Pierre, or would you look to fight um, someone soon, just not to be on the bench? Um. That's a tough question. I, I mean, the fighter inside me would say I might as well just fight, you know, and, 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 and the man who, uh, you know, maybe would retire one day without, without getting another title would, would say, you know, maybe you should have waited and, and took, that, took that chance. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough choice, you know, and, and uh, I guess, you know, for Khaled, he, he made the right choice. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know the answer to that question. Okay, fair enough. Um, thanks so much, BJ. Um, I'll look forward to seeing you uh, in a few weekends there on Halloween weekend. I'm, I'm psyched. Um, I got a question for, um, for Matt Mitrione. You there? And Matt, your line is open. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, uh, hey Matt, um, uh, what kind of cup are you going to be wearing uh, against Congo there? I'm going to wear one that's hopefully protecting, you know. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not too worried about it, man. I think that... Uh, you know, it's uh, whatever it is, as long as it covers up my, my, my jewels, my nuts and berries, I'll be all right, <laughs> my man. Um, are, you, uh, are you looking to keep this uh, standing up? Are you hoping to get him on his back and, and uh, do some damage down, down at the bottom there? Not you know, it kind of all depends. If he's, if he's kicking my ass standing up, I'm going to try to get him pregnant, you know. If, uh, if, if, if I'm doing well standing up, then I'll probably try to keep it there. But it um, kind of depends on the flow. You know, I mean, I, I've been working in wrestling. I've been working on my ground game. Um, you know, my cage defense, 
So uh, it kind of depends. It always, you know, you always have these mental plans and these loose kind of things, but pretty much all of them go out the window once you start scrapping and kind of see the tempo of the fight and, and how things are going. But if Chuck's getting out on me, there's no question in my mind that I'll be trying to dive on the floor to get him on the ground and scrap and wrestle with me down there. I love your style, brother. I love your style. I wish you the best of luck. I'm, uh, I'm just kind of wondering if it's going to be a, a win by a Mitrione smirk because we, uh, we know your opponents don't like your smirk when you're out in the cage there. Uh, well, thanks. As long as it's a win, I don't care about the smirk on or not. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. I love it. Okay. Thanks, all. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. And moving on, we'll go to Mike Chiapetta with AOL Sports. Is uh, Chuck Congo still on the line? Yeah, yeah. Check. Um, I wondering if you can answer. Um, Matt, Matt has obviously he's made a quick rise in the UFC, and, and this is sort of his real first big jump in opponent level. How did you feel when you were offered this fight with Matt, and kind of do you feel that he's ready for this jump? Uh, um, my point of view is, you know, everybody have the chance uh, to face uh, anyone uh, famous. So that's a good that's a good thing for him. Hopefully, he's going to be ready uh, for the bout. Uh, it's been many years and also uh, a thing. So uh, I, I'm going to try uh, to get uh, kicked out by somebody else. Uh, I learned a lot of uh, from my uh, last mistakes and uh, I will do my best. But for, for his fight, uh, yes, uh, that's something great. So he got the, the good skills. He's in good, he's in good, great shape. So let's see. So I wish him good luck uh, next Saturday. <laughs> Any particular parts of his game that that concern you more than others? Uh, well, I, I have any, anything to say about that. So uh, the the thing was, uh, uh, I'm training, you know, uh, I'm training everywhere. Uh, uh, boxing, uh, used to dressing. For uh, I learned last time uh, from the last fight uh, I made against uh, uh, Pat Barry. And also fought me or dropped me uh, with uh, a large hook. So it was the kind of thing, you know, surprised me and I didn't expect. So I think somewhere the, the, the strategy to work on that. But uh, I don't know about that, you know, I have any worries or, about that. And I'm still training, uh, still focused. I have a good partner, a good training coach, and uh, I just try to do my best uh, every day. So it's just getting better. So people say, okay, uh, you got weakness, but uh, oh, every day, every day, every hour, every minute, I work on my, on my mistake and weakness. So I, I think now, you know, I, I'm getting better than before. And uh, I just try to train both skills for the next time. Hopefully, uh, everybody will enjoy uh, I could bring uh, on my side again. Okay, thanks. And I have a question for BJ as well. Um, BJ, it seems like, you know, we, the media, the fans, we pay a lot of attention to what Nick does away from the sport with you no know, showing these press conferences and some of the other things that he's done in the past. I know you're, you're sort of a fight purist. I mean, do you think that we pay too much attention to this stuff and we should just kind of worry about you know, what, what he does come fight day, or do you think this is kind of warranted the scrutiny that he gets away from the cage and missing these uh, these obligations that the other fighters have to do? Yeah, I, I think I think it all goes hand in hand. And, and you know, and Nick, Nick is a great character of the sport. He's who he is. And, you know, um, there's no doubt uh, that I'll remember that, uh, you know, I'll remember him not showing up here today. You know he's he's a, he's a gutsy guy and and that's the way he fights and uh, you know that's that's Nick Diaz. But I think there's nothing wrong with uh, with um, you know the media focusing on that stuff. I mean it's something to talk about. It's it's a story and uh, you know it's it's you know I guess I, I don't want to say it's good for the sport. The guy not showing up to the press conference, but it it is a, another character in the sport. You know. And did you sort of agree with the initial decision to? pull Nick out of that fight with GSP, do you think that that was warranted from him missing the two conference calls, or should UFC have kind of looked past that and, and kept him in the fight? Because obviously they they were comfortable enough to keep him in there with you, and now he's in sort of the same position as the main event. Um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's strictly on Dana. I, I don't know how the, um, the sports bookies and everybody felt about uh, – Talked about um, maybe Nick getting pulled out of the GSP fight. I don't know what happened on that end, but um, 
you know, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, Dana, you know, Dana's got a, got a certain way he wants to run the company. And, uh, you know, I, I can understand uh, where, where, where Dana's coming from uh, with the stuff he does. And, and, and you know, I, I would have I would have loved to uh, uh, got to see the fight, uh, you know, with uh, GSP and Nick Diaz. But uh, here I find myself facing Nick Diaz uh, next week. So, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just it's, it is what it is. Do you think Nick would have beat George that fight if they if they had fought? I I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Okay, thanks for the time, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Now we'll go to Damon Martin with MMAWeekly dot com. Uh, just a quick follow up, BJ. You know, you've been Nick for a long time, but we know Nick inside the octagon or inside the cage. He likes to talk to opponents. He likes to kind of, you know, bait them into his kind of fight. Do you expect that to happen? And and how do you, you know, I mean, have you kind of do you laugh at that? Do you kind of prepare for that in the fight if he does start that kind of, you know, the talking thing during the fight? Yeah, um, yeah, I, 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 I probably expect it to happen. You know, a fight's a fight, and. Uh... You know, there's there's uh, no no friends in the octagon, and and uh, you know I, I I expect him to come out and you know say a bunch of things, and you know I'm, I'm you know I might be saying some stuff myself, and uh, you know that's just the nature of the game. Uh, um, fighting, uh, it's 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 a it's it's a tough sport, you know, and the tough people are involved, and you know you want to be as professional as you can, and and uh, sometimes you know your your emotions get to you, <laughs> but uh, of course I, I expect him to say stuff, and uh, you know. Yeah, that's just that's just uh, the nature of the fight. I, I, I won't hold any of that against him personally. And you and you and Nick have had history together, as far as I mean. Have you guys? You guys have. I don't know if you work together. You know each other. I mean, does that play into any of that? I mean, do you just kind of have to play it as you know? That's just part of the fight. You know, Nick's going to do it. It's not really personal. It's just the way he kind of amps him out, You know, amps himself up for a fight. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think he's just amping himself up for the fight. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure I've gotten uh, under a lot of people's skin over the years uh, with different things I've done and I've said, and and uh, you know that that's just it, man. It's yeah, he's going to be acting himself up. I mean, we we've trained together. Him and him and Nate Diaz uh, came down and uh, helped me uh, uh, defend my lightweight title after I lost to George St. Pierre. You know, they came down and uh, really uh, gave me the support and 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 trained with me a lot for the Kenny Florian fight. So you know, I I I, I know. You know, I, I've trained with them before, but as far as, like, uh, okay, this is what I'm going to do because I know this from training with them, it, it, it really doesn't work like that. Uh, whatever happens in the octagon, it's different. Awesome. Thanks, BJ. Thank you. All right, thank you. Now, moving on, we'll go to Ariel Helwani with AOL.com. Hey, guys, uh, this question is for BJ, and I apologize if uh, it was asked. I, I had to drop off for a second. BJ, I'm just wondering, in your mind, what is at stake for you uh, if you do beat Nick Diaz? Because it's pretty much, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's public knowledge that if Nick wins, there's a very good chance he'll fight for the title. But GSP, if he remains the champion after fighting Carlos Condit, you've already fought him twice, and Dana doesn't seem all too keen on putting you in there for a third time. So what would you be gaining from, from beating Nick other than just, obviously, uh, the big reward of beating him? Um, I think... Uh... You know, I, I think I think when it, I think you know, just um, me and Nick Diaz, it's a fight that ended up getting put together. It's, it's not a fight that uh, either of us asked for, but it's a job. And and uh, at the end of the day, we all gotta uh, we all gotta go to work. And and uh, you know, as far as uh, getting the, um, the 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 title shot or whatever, I think uh, you know what I think a bunch of the title shot and all that. It's all about at the right time. You know, who's open, who's injured, who's not injured, and. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, like I said earlier, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to get another, uh, you know, maybe we even win the welterweight title one more time, maybe even, you know, if possible, try to win the lightweight title another time. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit there as well on it. You know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm just going to um, keep trying to uh, fight my best. And, and like, like all fighters always say, the fight's against yourself. So I'm, I'm just going to constantly, you know, try to, try to push myself to, to, to my personal best. Does that mean that maybe you're you're rooting for Carlos to be GSP? Because if he would win, then it would obviously open up a lot of possibilities for you at 170. You know, 
it's, it's, I guess it's really hard to say. I mean, uh, Dana White was saying that, you know, if I beat John Fitch, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be uh, getting ready to fight for the title and, and this and that. And, and now, uh, now um, they're saying uh, maybe he's not getting ready to fight for the title. I just said all that stuff. I water off the back to back. That, that stuff just it's, it means nothing to me. Some, one day you're fighting for the title, one day you're not. You know, like I said, it'd be great to get another title, but, you know, I just want to keep moving forward, making money, and uh, try to feed myself. And, and one last question for you, BJ. Um, I've noticed that uh, Jason Perlo is back with you. Your last couple of fights, you surrounded yourself with some new faces, and some of the guys that were with you for a long time weren't in your corner. Um, why did you decide to go back to Jason? Um, I think uh, me, and, me and Jason, uh, we got good energy. We click well. Uh, besides, I mean, I mean, besides all the technical stuff, uh, you know, he's a uh, He's really a, he's got a fighter's mind and a, and a fighter's heart and and uh, you know I, I really um, you know you can learn a lot of techniques from people and, and different things but uh, right when you're about to walk out to the octagon you need you need somebody w- with the right mind and and, and and the right energy and and you know what to say the right thing to to get you ready for that fight. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, Ariel. All right, great. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to Joyce Valdez with RawVegas.tv and NBCSports.com. Hi, BJ. This question's for you. I just wanted to know about John Fitch. Is that a fight that you're still interested in pursuing a rematch, or is it something you don't even think about anymore? Um, actually, uh, when when uh, uh, well, the the whole the whole thing when I found out about uh, the Carlos Condé fighting GSP, I was sitting down uh, eating sushi, and Matt Hughes called, uh, shoots me a text. He's like, "Hey, so who are you fighting?" And I I thought, no, maybe Carlos got hurt. And then I heard about the whole thing that happened with Nick Diaz and not showing up to the press conference and all that stuff. And uh, from there, I um I, I was the first thing I did was like, because uh, John Fitch is, uh, keeps uh, you know. I mean, he's not getting my my gold or nothing, but he he keeps on uh he keeps on saying all this stuff that he can beat me easy and all these things. But so the first thing I do is uh, I, I I call Dana White and say, you know what, um, perfect, let's fight John Fitch. Uh, he said he's ready to go. He said he would love to fight me, and and Dana said no, he's he's uh, injured till December. He he can't fight till December. And I and I kept and and I go, I kept thinking, are you sure? Are you sure? You know, I kept bugging Dana about it. And, uh, and Dana just kept saying, no, he's injured. He, he can't fight. So, um, you know, as, as far as that goes, you know, um, uh, you know, I'll fight John Fitch at any time. I'd, I'd love to fight him again. Okay. And also a question for Dave Schaller. Dave, are you there? Hi, Joyce. Hi. Um, I know we keep harping on it, but I wanted to ask about Nick. And just to find out, when's the last time you guys talked to him? Does he actually... Like, do you all have conversations with him where he agrees to do, like, this call today and then he just isn't anywhere to be found when you're ready to, to speak to him? Joyce, respectfully, I'm not going to get into the specifics, but uh, we've been in constant communication with Caesar Gracie, and uh, he is still searching for Nick at the moment, and uh, that's where we'll leave it. Okay, thank you. All right, great. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, that is star one. If you'd like to queue up to ask a question, once again, that is star one. And we'll go to Brendan Church, Brendan Church and with MMA Nonstop. Hey, thanks, guys. Um, real quick, just a quick one for Matt and Check. Um, curious, with the with the fight coming up for you guys, this is a big fight moving up to the co-main spot. Um, just curious, with a win, if, Matt, if you could go first, uh, how far do you think that puts you from a title shot, and, and what's it going to take for you to get that title shot? You know what the awesome thing about that question is, is that I don't get paid to worry about that. So <laughs> I don't really care, to be honest. I mean, it depends. If I go out there and beast Congo, then um, you know, then 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 that's the conversation we have. If I go out there and get my ass kicked and uh, get embarrassed while while it happens, well, then that's the conversation I don't need to have. So I mean, really, it doesn't really matter to me. And um, you know, the headway division is looking really pretty, and they're bringing a lot of other uh, strike force guys over. So, you know, that conversation or looking forward to having that conversation is quite literally like uh, 128th on my mind. All right. And, and check, same for you. Um, you had a great fight with Cain Velasquez uh, when you got to face him. Um, probably had more success against him than anybody else has to date. I'm just curious if, if with a win over uh, Matt and, and a decisive win at that, how far do you think that puts you from a title shot? Honestly, uh, I, I don't have uh, no idea about that, so I just try to do my best uh, all the time to improve and be successful uh, step by step, and hopefully if I get the uh, the chance to fight soon as possible, yeah, I will be happy. 
But right now, I, I can pretend to say uh, yes. Uh, I, I'm the next one, but uh, I know the 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 line is very very long. But uh, hopefully, yes, I would like to fight for the best as soon as possible. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, guys, and uh, good luck to you both. Just one quick one for BJ to follow up. Uh, BJ, earlier you mentioned, you know, potentially fighting for the welterweight title and, if possible, fighting again for the lightweight title. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, are you kind of waiting out that, that potential move for Frankie down to featherweight and, and maybe the Jose Aldo move up to lightweight? Is that a potential matchup you're eyeing, or are you just kind of throwing it out there as if the fight comes up and the uh, opportunity arises for a lightweight title shot, you jump at it? Yep. DJ, are you still there? Oh, yeah. What's that, sir? Oh, my bad, man. BJ, I was just curious. You mentioned earlier talking about fighting for the lightweight title. Um, was there somebody in mind that you were looking to challenge for that title if Frankie is to lose it or, or potentially move down to featherweight? Or was that just um, if the offer ever presented itself, you'd jump at the option to fight for the lightweight title again? Yeah, if the offer ever presented myself, I'd jump at the challenge. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Thank you guys very much, and uh, good luck to you all next Saturday. Thank you. All right, great. Now we'll move on to Tom Go with fifthround.com. Hi, uh, I have a question for BJ, or a couple questions for BJ. Um, earlier on the call, you said that if you're pro- or properly compensated, you'd be willing to take a five-round fight. Uh, given that it's 10 days away from fight time, physically, are you comfortable with that? that you, yeah. Because uh, you've been preparing yeah, for a three-round fight. Yeah, uh, physically, yeah. I'd, be, I'd be very comfortable, and I'd be willing to take a fight. Okay, and the Hello. second part of my question Hello. is... Hello? Go ahead. You're still live. Oh. Okay. Uh, second part of my question is, because Caesar Gracie was so vocal yesterday in, in kind of going after you and pushing for a five-round fight, did you feel that you are kind of back into a corner that you have no choice but to say that you'd be willing to take it? just so you don't give Nick any type of mental advantage? No. no. I knew he, um, I, you know, uh, Caesar is a strange guy, you know. Um, you know, uh, it, it's, um, I, don't, I don't know why he did that in the first place. I think, actually, Caesar should be the guy to have to compensate me to take it, not Dana. But uh, at, at, the, um, at, at the end of the day, no, I, I don't mind. I, I'd love to do a five-round fight. You know, if, if I'm compensated, you know, this is a job, I, I'd, love, I'd love it. Fine. A main event, it, you know, there's nothing wrong with a main event being five rounds. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Great. Thank you very much. Well, at this time, I'd like to turn the conference over to Mr. Dave Schaller. Thank you, Abe. And, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, I do want to let you know that Nick Diaz has now joined the call. Nick, welcome to the call. Hey, how's it going? Good. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take questions, star one, and uh, Nick Diaz has joined the call. Thanks, Nick. All right, great. Thank you very much. Once again, that's star one. If you'd like to queue up to ask a question this time, again, that is star one. And we'll pause for a moment to assemble our roster. All right, great. We'll go to Stephen Rocco with MMAJunkie.com. Question on everybody's minds is what what happened in the last 24 hours? Um, what, why did you miss the call, or, or, or were, you, were you late to the call? What I didn't, you know what I didn't even know about a call. What happened? I didn't even know there was a call. Nobody called me in the last week or a couple of days or anything like that. So there was a call. I trained last night. I went home, got something to eat, went to sleep, woke up. My phone was dead, and then uh, my brother's telling me that I'm supposed to run a call. I don't know anything about it. You know, it's as simple as that. Okay, so it's more just like the circumstances of you not uh, getting notice. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't get any notice for this, for this call. I didn't know anything about it until about a half hour ago. Or no, not even that, about 15 minutes ago. Uh, what kind of training were you doing? Uh, uh, Caesar said you were on some sort of like a, like a bike ride or a training ride, or what kind of training were you doing in the past uh, 24 hours? Um, I did pretty much um, what I've been doing all half this week. Um, you know, I was out on the road and uh, in the gym half the day, and then I made it to uh, practice around 7.30, something like that, 8 o'clock. For, okay. uh, like, fight training, you know, uh, we had jiu-jitsu, uh, a bunch of guys from your eyes, 
um, place came down for uh, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, had boxing last night. Pretty big night. All right, Hello? thanks, Nick. All right, great. Thank you very much. Well, now moving on, we'll go take a question from Neil Davidson with Canadian Press. Yeah, thanks uh, for being on the call, Nick. There's been a lot uh, has gone on with this fight, obviously, with main events and injuries and things like that. Do you have any regrets about uh, the lead-up to this fight, or um, do you really not let that stuff affect you? Um, like in what way? In, in training, or what do you mean? Well, I mean, you were off the main event because you didn't go to the press conferences, then uh, you seemed off the card, then you're in the co-main event, then you're in the main event. It seems to be, you know, a lot of turmoil. Uh, yeah, fighters. yeah, I've just, I've just done my best to try not to focus on, on, on what's going on, you know, and, and, and just try to, try to, try to live every day like it's really not a big deal because I don't know what's going to happen with me, but it's not going to make a difference um, whether or not I whine or cry about it or, or, or panic to get things done. I'm just going to do what I always do and train, and, and um, you know, it's time to fight. I go fight, and um, that really depends on whether or not I'm, I'm ready, you know. And that's really about me. It's not about whatever's going on in the world or whatever, who I'm fighting or who I'm not fighting or, you know. I'm not really going to have a choice on that. My job is to fight, so I have to fight when I'm told to fight. Um, and that's why, you know, that's, that's, what I, that's what I do. That's what I do well. Everything else is just, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's going to be, it's just going to be a whole other task than, uh, than fighting itself or training itself. So, Do you think you've been treated fairly leading up into this whole UFC 137 return to the UFC? Or do you think perhaps you uh, you made any missteps? No, I you know I'm I'm just um, I'd rather kind of just plead the fifth on that because I you know I just I I didn't make any mistakes as far as training and doing what I do. You know I've been doing every I'm in, I've been there putting in you know 100 percent. You know and um, I think that I'd always thought that's what's important. You know, you good people want to see fights. They want to see good fights. They want to see good fighters. And that's what I'm trying to bring to the table. All right. Appreciate your answer. Good luck next week. Great. Thank you. Now, moving on, we'll go to Karen Bryant with MMA Heat. This question's for you. Earlier on the call, uh, BJ said that he thinks you're the best boxer in MMA. And I'm just curious what your take on that statement is. And also, to sort of what your opinion is on BJ, if you were a fan of his, how you feel about fighting him for your um, introduction into the UFC. Yeah, well, you know, sure, I appreciate that, what he said. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, that's reasonable. Um, it is, you know, I've had more of a boxing experience than most people in the UFC, and anybody who has had more uh, clearly um, have outdone them in some way or, you know, so I think that... Uh, I think yeah, sure, you know. Um and I uh, know I'm not happy about I'm not happy about it at all. You know, I'm fighting fighting a, a guy who's my friend <clears throat> or you know, who was my friend and now I'm fighting this guy. Um I was set to fight, assigned to fight uh, a certain guy, I thought we had a deal. You know, that's that's kinda where I'm at on it. That's that's just that's how it set off, you know. And then uh yeah, so no, I'm not. Of course, I'm gonna. Have, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know, deal. With, I'm not. You know, this is hard times. Just like you, you know, just like it's been. But I'm expecting it to get any easier. You know, so um, this definitely doesn't make anything easier for me. I don't. I don't like fighting people I've already know or I've already met or trained with or have video on me or you know, because uh, we spend a lot of time training together. You know, so it's kind of shady feelings going into fights like that, but. Uh, I'm just doing. I just do. I'm just doing what my manager says. You know, they they work it out. Work it out um, in the gym training, and then they decide to tell me, okay, do this or do that, and then and then um, you know, I'm just doing what I'm told. Okay, and uh, and stylistically, do you think a fight with BJ is going to show off your skills more than a fight with GSP would have? I'm just kind of thinking about how you feel. 
introducing yourself into the UFC, if you know what I'm saying. Like, do you think that this is a better fight for you stylistically, or would you have preferred to fight GSP? I would have preferred to fight GSP, of course, you know, uh, because um, it was, you know, it's not like I'm fighting somebody I already know. I'm fighting for the title. That's what I. That's that's why I started this. That's why I'm fighting for the UFC because I came to fight for the title. I came to fight for the money. I came to fight for the title, and um, <clears throat> that was the GSP fight. So now I'm not doing that fight. And uh, I think, yeah, I think I had the right the right skills and um, um, you know the right tools to do the job in that fight. And um. So I don't know. I don't know whether this fight is going to make me come off looking better or worse. As far as I know that uh, <clears throat> I know that I think that 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 George comes out and he can. A lot of guys, you know, like he's a little bit bigger than BJ size wise, so he's able to hold BJ, you know, and the stall for the rounds. You know, I don't think he would have been able to do that to me, especially in the five rounds. You know, in a five round fight. So I was looking forward to that. You know, and. Uh, and uh, I think that was going to be interesting to see how, uh, you know, either how he was going to deal with me or how I was going to deal with him. But this fight, yeah, like, you know, it's a, it's a completely different fight. And um, I think DJ is a lot better fighter, to be honest with you. I think at te- on the technical standpoint or, you know, he's, in, he's much better jiu-jitsu, box, boxing, you know. And... Um, even on a physical level, I wouldn't I wouldn't count him out. I don't think he should fight at this weight. I don't think he looked so great his last fight, for whatever reason, at 155 pounds. You know, for whatever reason, you know, I don't know, but uh, but yeah, I think that that uh, that he, you know, I think he's a much better fighter than GSP all around. Okay, cool. Well, thanks, and we'll see you next week. Good luck. All right, great. Thank you. Now moving on, we'll go to Jose Rodriguez with Sun Media. Uh, hi, my question is for Nick. Uh, Nick, I know you say you try to not let the things that happen, um, you know, outside of your training and preparing for a fight bother you, but do you have any regret at all that, that you know, you didn't get that title fight because you didn't get on a plane? Well, yeah, of course I have regret. I have regret, I, you know, like, there was a... <laughs> I have regret. I had a... I, I have, like, you know, people are supposed to take care of stuff like um, I got like a lawyer or something, right? I'm supposed to get paid some on hundred hundred grand, you know, or some I don't know a ridiculous amount of money, all right? And um, <clears throat> you know, I I've been I've been doing the same, living the same since I started, since I was seventeen. You know, I lived down the street from my parents, who I used to live in the same house with. Now I live with my brother, and uh, I've got all these people, business people, and big money people around me trying to make deals. I don't know anything about that. All I know is somebody's getting paid like over a hundred grand just to just to tell me what I'm supposed to do and what I'm not supposed to do. And I'm like, for that much money, I think I think you know I could have had somebody standing around telling me, hey, uh, you can't miss this uh, press conference. That that kind of you know that avoids the whole contract, and then you're out. You ain't getting shit. You ain't fighting shit. You ain't making no money. So you have to be at this thing. It's simple. I can tell, you know, if I had read that shit over myself, I'd have been a little more cautious and, and not been like, oh, I got people, you know, getting paid to tell me, like, all right, you need to be here or there. If I didn't feel like I had that, then I would have probably read that shit myself and dealt with things myself and been a little more cautious, and I probably would have showed up at that press conference, you know, but uh, that's not the case, you know. Everybody's... Um, you know, I'm in the gym training hard. I think that's what's important. I think we signed, made a deal. I think a deal is a deal. You know what I mean? I don't know anything about, um, you know, going back on that. I <laughs> that didn't even that didn't even, you know that never came to mind. But as far as I'm concerned, the people working for me that should have uh, been there to tell me, you know, what's what's what, and that's that's I didn't have that like everybody else has. You know, are, are those people still working for you, Nick? Um, not by choice. If so, I don't know. You know, I just, uh, it's whatever. I don't, I, I'm not really, it's not like I have all this time to go get into that part either. Who's working for me? Who's not working for me? I've been trained, you know, I'm already, you know, I've had to deal with everybody telling me, oh, you're, you're, 
you're fighting this guy or you're fighting that guy or you're not fighting or you're fighting or you're, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, I've had to deal with all that through this whole thing. So, um, you know, of course, you know, of course I'm going to have to deal with that on top of having hard training regardless, you know. Uh, it's it's not easy. Do you, do you think, sorry, Nick, do you think what happened today was one of those people didn't tell you about the press conference today? When, or is it... when, should, when should I have known about this press conference? When should I have known? About no, no, I, I'm just, I'm just asking because I think it's been scheduled for a while now. I'm just wondering if it was your people yeah, that didn't well, let you know, or someone could have gave me a call. You know, like if <laughs> I didn't, I don't, you know, I don't know who's talking to who about a press conference call, but I didn't, I didn't hear about it. That was, it was like, <laughs> yeah, it was like, um, you know, just like anything, I never heard about this shit until, until you know, way late. So. But you got you know you got to know I'm not sitting here with my phone waiting for a call I'm, I'm waiting for some training, you know I'm trying to get some some uh, relaxed time before I have to go back to another four hours of training. You know I'm training hard. Okay, I train no. harder than these guys, man. I fight harder than these guys. I look better than these guys. I do better than these guys. You know, and that's why it's because I've been you know, and uh, I don't get no help and I don't wor- I don't worry about no help. You know, mm-hmm. so that's what takes up all my time training. You're trying to, you know, become the best in the world here. And that's the best in the world, all right? That's what you're dealing with here. This is a whole world out there. Ain't nobody can beat me. It's pretty bad. Fair. Thank you Thank you very much, Nick. And I do wish you all the best in the fight. I just had one uh, quick for Mr. question for Mr. Schaller. Uh, how long has this conference call been scheduled for? Well, Jose, I can tell you that we, we sent out the release earlier in the week, and, and as I mentioned to Joyce, I'd prefer not get, to get into the specifics other than to say we, we were in constant communication with Caesar. But uh, all is well that ends well now that uh, Nick is on the call, and, uh, and that's how we're going to proceed. No, fair enough, and best of luck to all the fighters on the call. All right, thank you. Now moving on, we'll go to Leif Knudsen with Fox News, Minneapolis. Hi there, Leif Knudsen here. Uh, Nick, how about we talk about the actual fight. Um, you and BJ seem to get along pretty good. You've trained together in the past. Uh, both you and BJ are fiery fighters and will show that, have showed that in the ring. Um, are we going to see that scaled back, being that you and BJ, you know, get along well, or are we going to see the vintage uh, Diaz taunting and uh, feeding off the energy? Um. I don't know. You guys are going to call it what you will anyways. You know, I just go out there. I fight the way that I'm supposed to fight to win the fight. And uh, so... <clears throat> I, call, um, I, call, I call it entertainment. I love it. Um, so is the, uh, you know, being that uh, you're mo- you've moved from strike force, is there any uh, side action there? If uh, you lose, do you give BJ the belt or is that yours to keep? Um, you know what? I don't. I don't know anything. But I haven't really thought about anything. You know, I'm just, I'm sure. just fighting, fight. You know, I'm not trying to get all crazy. I need to get paid. Some show up and make my make weight. All right, mm-hmm. and um, then I'm gonna fight. I'm just going through the ropes. But I don't really think about all that. Gotcha, gotcha. Can't, can't wait if to see. If that's what's it. up, if that's if you want to put that up, if you, since you're the one that's bringing that up, you know what I mean. You want to, you want to <clears throat> start that whole thing, then that's that's on you or whoever wants to jump on your little bandwagon and and bring that out <laughs> in the open. But I can give a shit. I don't care. I never put that belt on anyways. He could have the belt. You know, it's not important <laughs> to me. All right, thanks, Nick. I love it. What do you think about that, BJ? Does that matter to you? You just just scrap. What's up? Well, what, what's that, sir? Uh. We were talking, I was trying to uh, provoke Nick a little bit, seeing if the belt was on the line, the Strike Force belt. Is that something that interests you? Well, you know what? You know what? The only, the only thing I, I got to focus on is, you know, just going there on October 29th, you know, and, uh, you know that, that's, uh, that's Nick's Strike Force belt that, that he earned over there fighting in Strike Force. And, you know, I just got to, you know, I just got to go out there and do my job. All right, great. Thank you very much. Well, now we'll move on to Matthew Roth with BloodyElbow.com. Hi, Nick. How you doing, man? How's it going? Hey, uh, Nick. So you and BJ, you have pretty similar styles. Uh, you're both boxers and, and jujitsu uh, fighters. Does it matter to you where the fight takes place? Um, you know, it's it, it's it's a fight, man. You know what I mean? 
I, that's not really what matters. I mean, I suppose it's not what matters. All right. And these, Especially are, are in this fight, you know, that's not really what really matters anyways, you know. I think uh, this fight can go everywhere, you know. It can, anything can happen. You see what may fight him. All right. And, uh, and BJ, what, what about you? Do you, do you, do you see your, yourself <clears throat> anywhere in the fight? Well, what was that? Do you see yourself having an advantage in jiu-jitsu or in boxing in this fight? No, uh, I've already stated that, uh, you know, that, you know, Nick, is, he's got to be the most accomplished, uh, you know, uh, man, as far as maybe a, a pro boxer like James Coney or something came into the sport, you know, as far as a mixed martial arts guy, he's it, you know, he's on the top of, he's on the top of the boxing, hands down, and, uh, you know, you know, it, it just, the, the thing for me, like, you know, I, I just, like any, like any other fight, I got to go out and, and give it my best shot. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, great, thank you. And we'll take our final question from Damon Martin with MMAWeekly.com. Uh, yeah, a quick question for Nick, just to follow up on what I asked BJ earlier. Uh, you know, Caesar had said you guys are very interested in making this a five-round fight, uh, you know, for the fans and, and for this being the main event. What about you, Nick? How do you feel about, you know, making this a five-round fight? Um, <clears throat> it's it's whatever, you know. It's... it's uh... It's really not up to me. I, I mean, uh, I, either way, I guess it's fine. It's going to be okay for me. Five, you know, it's just. Uh... All right. Thanks very much. All right. Great. That's all the time we have for questions today. I'd like to turn things back over to Mr. Schaller. Thanks, Abe, and uh, thank you to all the media who joined in today. I want to say a special thank you to BJ Penn, Nick Diaz, Matt Mitrione, and Czech Congo. For members of the media, so you are all aware, we will be sending out our full press activities for UFC 137 on Friday, so be on the lookout for that. And uh, in the meantime, we appreciate you all hanging in there. Great call today, and we will see you next week for UFC 137. Great. Thank you very much. Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude today's conference.